This is the third of four um, IB multiple choice question walkthroughs for this paper. This is paper number two that I'm doing, um, and this will be questions 21 through 30. If you want to access the unanswered questions, they're in the link in the description below, and so is the link to the playlist with the rest of the worked answers. Uh, question 21. The amplitude of a wave is A, and its intensity is I. Which amplitude is necessary for the intensity to be doubled to 2I? Okay, as is the way always with these two situation questions, we want to write out both situations. So first of all, we know that amplitude uh, intensity is proportional to amplitude squared. And uh, then in the uh, second scenario, um, we want uh, to find out what 2i would be. But uh, if we rewrite this as i equals ka squared, where k is some kind of constant, then we can rewrite the second one as, if we make that i1 and that a1, then i2 equals k a2 squared. Uh, and we know that i2 equals 2i1. So then we could say 2i1 equals k a2 squared. And then we can equate that. So i1 equals k a2 squared and I1 also equals Ka1. So then we have Ka1 squared equals, uh, oops, that's over two, uh, equals Ka2 squared over two. And so then we can cancel through by K. Um, we can say that uh, if we square root everything, then we get A1 one equals a two divided by root two and the question is which amplitude is necessary so what is a two uh, a two is root two times a one so root two times a one is root two a which is c is the answer question 22 a 400 microfarad capacitor, C equals 400 times 10 to the minus 6, is charged so the voltage across its plates rises at a constant rate from 0 volts. Change in voltage equals 4 volts to 4 volts in 20 seconds. Change in time is 20 seconds. I'm going to use a different colour for the rest of this to differentiate from the question above. Uh, we've got two equations that we need for this. We want to find the current, and we know that current is that change in charge over change in time, but we don't have charge, but we can find charge from our capacitance equation, C equals Q over V. So the um, capacitance at, uh, when it's at maximum here, is the, uh, the charge that it stores when it's at maximum is CV, which gives us a charge So if Q equals CV, then the change in charge is C delta V. And so we can substitute that in up here. So I equals C delta V over delta T. And then you can plug in all of your data into that equation because we've got the data, all the data here, which gives you a final current of 80 microamps. Uh, question 23. Which combination of up and down quarks forms a proton? This is just something that you need to remember. A proton is up, up, down. A neutron is up, down, down. Those are the two quark compositions that you need to remember. So the answer to 23 is B. Question 24. The volume of an ideal gas in container is increased at constant temperature. Which of the following statements is correct about the molecules of the gas? Okay, constant temperature means constant average speed. Remember, temperature is a representation of the average speed of the molecules, so that one is correct. The frequency of collisions with the unit area of the container walls decreases. That's basically saying that the pressure is decreasing. If the volume is increased at constant temperature, the pressure will decrease, so that's right. The force between them decreases. Well, in an ideal gas, we assume that there is negligible force between them, so that one's wrong. So one and two only, B. Question 25, 
you've got a graph for energy against time for an electrical generator and you want to find the maximum electrical power. Well, in any graph, uh, we know that power is energy divided by time. And in any graph, if you want to do the y-axis divided by the x-axis, that's the gradient. So the power here is the gradient of this graph. Now, the steepest gradient is found in this section here. Then you just have to, because we're after the maximum electrical power, we're after the maximum gradient. So there's the steepest gradient. And that goes, the change in y is 40 to 10. So that's 30. The change in x is 1 divided by 1 is 30 watts. So the power there is 30 watts. In the Young's double slit experiment, how can we increase the fringe separation? Well, our double slit equation is S equals lambda D over D, uh, where the fringe separation is S. Uh, and so we would either increase lambda, increase big D, or decrease little d. The only option there that agrees with that is B, increasing the wave length. A tiny oil droplet with that mass is at rest in an electric field. Um, the weight of the droplet is exactly balanced by the electrical force on the droplet. Okay, so we know that the weight is mg, and we know that's exactly balanced by the electrical force. Electrical force is kqq over r squared. So mg equals kqq over r squared. Now, you don't have any of that. All you've got is the electric field strength, but the electric field strength is given by the change in potential over the change in R or the potential gradient, and the potential is KQ over R. So uh, the electric field strength, therefore, could be represented by KQ over R squared. So if you sub the electric field strength in for those values, then you get mg equals E times Q. Uh, you have all of those, uh, all of those pieces of data in the question. So you've got the mass there, you've got G as 9.81, you've got the electric field strength E, and you need to find Q. So Q is mg divided by E, which gives you an answer of D minus 3.2 times 10 to the 19. We know that it's a negative charge. Uh, it's not C, it's D, because um, it must be an upwards force on the droplet because uh, the weight is obviously going downwards, so the force must be upwards, which means that, remember, the field lines go from positive to negative. And so this is the positive plate at the top, so it's got to be attracted to the positive plate, so it must be a negatively charged droplet, so it must be D and not C. Question 28. The difference between the mass of a carbon-12 nucleus and the sum of the masses of individual nucleons is 0.1 U. Which of the following is approximately the binding energy of the nucleus? Okay, for this, you need your data booklet. And you need to have a look in your data booklet for the uh, mass equivalent of the unified atomic mass unit U. And in the units MeV per C squared, um, which is clearly the, uh, the, the units that we, we would be most useful for this question. If you look at the units, uh, 1U equals 931.5 MeV per C squared. Um, this is 0.1U, so 0.1U must equal 93.15 MeV per C squared. But what we're looking for here is binding energy. The key word there is energy. Now, this unit is a mass equivalent. So E equals mc squared. We've got the mass unit. We need to multiply that by c squared. So we need to remove that part of the unit. So we're looking for 93 mega electron volts because that's a unit of energy. Mega electron volts per c squared is a unit of mass, not a unit of energy. The question's asking for energy. So the unit is mega electron volts without the c squared. So A is the correct answer. Question 29, which one of the following objects is in equilibrium? A stone trapped in the tread of a rotating tire. Well, that's, uh, that's in circular motion, so there must be an acceleration towards the center of the circle, so it can't be that. An air molecule is a sound wave passes through the air. An air molecule is vibrating and uh, is exhibiting simple harmonic motion as the sound wave passes through the air around an, equilibri an, uh, around an equilibrium position. So it's not B because that would be experience and acceleration as well. A steel ball falling at a constant speed. The key word there is constant speed. Remember resultant force 
is equal to mass times acceleration. If it's, if it's a constant speed, then there's zero acceleration, and so there must be zero re resultant force, so it must be in equilibrium. So C is your correct answer. And just to check, question uh, option D, an electron moving through a metal under the action of a potential difference. Um, well, if it's under the action of its potential difference, then it's uh, being given some energy and it is accelerating through the metal. And so D is an incorrect answer as well. An electromagnetic wave travels in a straight line through a vacuum. The wave has frequency of 6 terahertz, so F equals 6.0 times 10 to the 12. What is the number of wavelengths in a distance of 1 meter? Okay, so an electromagnetic wave, we know that the speed of the electromagnetic wave is 3 times 10 to the 8. That's from your data book as well, if you can't remember that. Um, C equals F lambda. And so uh, the wavelength is C divided by F. But we want the number of wavelengths in a distance of one meter. This is giving the distance in meters of one wavelength. So we need to do one divided by lambda. So one divided by lambda is the answer, uh, which equals F divided by C. And F divided by C, if you put that into your calculator, 6 times 10 to the 12 divided by 3 times 10 to the 8, it gives you C, 2 times 10 to the 4. That was uh, part three or four of the second set of IB multiple choice questions that I've been doing as examples. If you want to see the other three videos, click the link for the playlist in the description below. And if you want, again, if you want the unanswered questions so you can have a go yourself, there's a link in the description below as well. Thanks for watching.